It's one month since Cyclone Gabriel packed an unprecedented punch, leaving New Zealand with a multi-billion dollar clean-up that we'll be paying for for decades. Crunching the latest numbers, 851 homes across Northland, Auckland, Waikato, Tairawhiti, Hawke's Bay and Tararua are red-stickered. And 753 households in Hawke's Bay and Tairawhiti still have no power. 11 communities in Tairawhiti and 19 in Hawke's Bay remain isolated or only accessible by four-wheel drive. 147 roads, six state highways and at least 40 bridges remain closed across the North Island. 10,000 cars have now been written off. At least 40,000 insurance claims are expected. And of course the death toll stands at 11. Investigations correspondent Michael Mora has visited some of the worst hit areas of Hawke's Bay where a month on people are still picking up the pieces of their lives and crying out for more help. Amid a mountain of debris, a jagged, undulating path to Stephanie Wilson's home. If this is one of the access points to your place? Yep. Access was only recently carved out. Beneath this mess of slash once stood a pristine apple orchard. She says she's in a holding pattern, waiting to find out how to clear the slash and silt, and waiting to find out if she'll be able to rebuild and where. We're just waiting for the government agencies to let us know what we can do and just we have no control over our futures at the moment. Inside her home, thick sludge coats the floor. The pink bats, heavy with floodwaters, hang from the ceiling. The coffee table she and her husband used to clamber onto the roof still rests in the silt. The memories are fresh, especially the sight of animals being swept away. The livestock wasn't able to get up onto the slash or anything. They were sucked in and under um, and just watching animals feeling pretty helpless. Her family's lost 90 hectares of apples in total, which includes land run by her dad, Des Wilson. He says funding support offered so far just doesn't cut it. You know, the relief through MPI is, um, you know, we've used that already. So, you know, it's, you know, extreme areas um, you know, need extra support. Forestry workers are clearing slash and salvaging some trees for sale. And there's progress on the stop bank. The crater I'm standing in is what remains of the stop bank, a protective wall which failed spectacularly one month ago. Floodwaters overwhelmed it and the residents of Pukatapu. You can see the top of it just up there. Work is now underway to rebuild. Locals say the new stop bank must be longer and higher. In nearby Eskdale, the work ahead is hard to comprehend. Hundreds of cars, campers, everything, trucks, all sorts. It's just, I ain't never seen anything like it, mate. Silt remains the biggest problem here, acres of it. In the absence of a digger, local resident Mel was doing what he could to clear his fence line. The lack of interest in this valley is quite amazing. We are operating of 1930s tools, yet we hear from politicians that everything's under control and the state of emergency is over. I'll tell you what an emergency is, using a spade instead of a digger. Let's see some action and less talk. The first convoy of freight trucks rumbled through Eskdale's State Highway 5. But there's concern about a fixation on roads rather than the reality for residents. There seems to be only one priority, and that's opening the road, opening the road. But the road's got to go through a disaster zone where people's lives are in tatters. In tatters, with some concerned bureaucracy is blocking desperately needed progress. Michael Mora joins us now from Eskdale. Michael, what have authorities said in response to residents saying they need more help? Well, the Napier City Council is urging people to be patient, saying this is a complex emergency and they are trying to get help to those who need it. The Agriculture Minister, Damien O'Connor, says $51 million has been made available to growers and farmers and that will not be the end of it. But for people who are living in this crisis, that help is simply not 
enough. And walking around Eastdale today, Orene, did feel a lot like a ghost town. Apart from a few roading contractors who were out and about, there appeared to be very little activity on the ground. And residents say that needs to change, and it needs to change now. Tēnā where that's Investigations correspondent Michael Morrow.